Welcome back. Two weeks ago, a mass abduction of teenage schoolgirls by Islamic militants in Nigeria shocked that nation and the world. About 50 girls were able to escape since then, but more than 200 are still missing. Today, the parents of those girls are saying that they were sold into marriage to militants. Joining me now is Michael Leiter, MSNBC counterterrorism expert and former director of the National Counterterrorism Center, and Maushi. Malsi Yishigan, Nigeria researcher for Human Rights Watch, joining me now by Skype from Abuja. Thank you both very much. Michael, first to you, let's talk about Boko Haram, the group that is uh, credited uh, being held responsible for this horrific kidnapping and now selling these girls into slavery for well, a pittance. This is a very, very violent group, which is the name Boko Haram actually means roughly Western education is a sin. And over the past five to ten years it has fought against the Nigerian government in the north of Nigeria extremely violently, has also been associated with Al-Qaeda. In that sense, there is an international flavor to this organization. But it has been absolutely brutal in its attacks, not just kidnapping, but massacres at school. And this is another illustration of a really serious, violent Islamic extremist element in northern Nigeria. Masi Shagan in Abuja, tell me, tell us of what we know about the girls and their condition uh, from the report that you're getting from Human Rights Watch? It's honestly been extremely difficult to get much inform credible information out of northern Nigeria right now. Uh, the, the, the area where the girls were abducted from, there is a, a, a bit of communication problems um, around that area. The little that we're able to get is from the few people we're able to speak with over the telephone. And um, none of this information uh, is entirely credible. But we're able to, what we're able to garner out of all of it is that there are still at least 230 girls being held by Boko Haram. Uh, some of them, uh, also confirmed by military forces, have been taken out of the Sambisa Forest camp where they were initially taken to by the group. They've been taken, some have been taken across to the border to Cameroon. Some, have, or some of them have been taken to Chad. And um, a few were still within the country, but their whereabouts is difficult to ascertain at this time. The, the, the identity of these girls have been um, held, held out of uh, um, uh, media reports uh, for security reasons. Uh, the families are concerned. Uh, some of the parents have spoken boldly, uh, but would know very little about the girls except that they were in their, uh, the, the highest class of the secondary school in Nigeria. They were writing their school living um, examinations. Uh, that was the reason why they were in school at all, because all the schools in Borno State have been closed until now. Uh, the, the girls were there. Uh, pulled from different parts of not just Borno State, a few of them are from Adamawa State, uh, because this particular school, the girls secondary school, is an examination center for the senior school certificate examination. So the, not all of them are students of this particular school, but they were pulled into that school to write the, the examination. So you would find that many of them would be between the ages of 16, uh, maybe a few will be uh, uh, um, younger than that, but between 16 and 18 years old. And Michael Leiter, what about the Nigerian government? Uh, doesn't the central government, I mean, this is not a poverty-stricken country. This is an oil-wealthy country with many international corporations there. Um, can't they provide security for their girls and women? And can't they move against Boko Haram? Well, it's very difficult in this part of the country. As you say, Nigeria is not poor. Enormous natural resources, huge numbers of Western energy companies there. It's the most popular nation in Africa by more than two, 155 million people. The problem is that the government's writ of authority is really relatively narrow, and they have problems in the south and the Nigerian Delta. They have problems with the north with Islamic extremists, and they can't control all these areas. And frankly, when they have, lots of their actions have been almost as ruthless as Boko Haram's. They have gone in with very little discretion, and they have killed lots of people, too, fueling some of the radicalization that we've seen in the North over the past five years. Michael Leiter, thank you so much for your insight. Malsi Shagun, thank you so much for joining us from Abuja by Skype. We really appreciate that as well. And can the world powers in another part of the world save Ukraine's economy from Russia's stranglehold? IMF Chief 